Hello, this is Bern. And if you notice that you're wasting a lot of your valuable time with guys who are non-committal, unavailable, or plain toxic, on today's video, I'm gonna share with you seven things you can do that will simultaneously repel these kinds of men and attract healthy, compatible ones into your life. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious, heart-centered, and intelligent women how you can attract the relationship and the man you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, silly techniques, <laughs> and by being the best version of yourself. Let's first define what unavailable and toxic means in the context of this video. Now, any guy who connects with you in the sphere of figuring out if you could be a potential life partner for him, who wants something different from you is not gonna be a compatible partner for you. Any guy who comes in with certain amount of baggage that adds more pain than value is gonna be something that is toxic for you. Anyone who doesn't help you come to be your best self, anyone you have to hide your personality around, anyone that doesn't see greatness in you would be a toxic person for you. So my goal right now is that the things that I'm sharing with you will simultaneously kill two birds with one stone. What does that mean? That if you sh do the things that I'm asking you to do in this video, uh, guys who are awesome will evaluate you in a greater light and guys who are time wasters, incompatible and toxic will be repelled by these attitudes. So the first thing you wanna do is define precisely and clearly what you want and what is a showstopper. So what does this mean? Well, if you're ambiguous about what you want and you connect with a man, then because you're ambiguous, you might be going to a destination that's not the one you really want to end up in, or he might have some traits that you don't want to connect with, but out of lack of definition, you just say, well, I mean, you don't even know. So you continue doing something, continue in a relationship that can potentially be very harmful for you. So when you are clear about what you want and you know what are things beyond the obvious things, like the guy's really disrespectful or the guy is pushing for sex in a way that's not conducive to a relationship. I mean, aside from those blatantly obvious things, there might be some show-stopping signs, qualities, virtues, religions, ideologies that you want to define before you put yourself out there so that you don't waste your time or their time. Second thing you want to do is you want to get clear about expressing your voice. So having a voice that's defined and being willing and courageous enough to express it means that guys who want something unique, someone who's different, someone who's courageous, someone who's self-assured will be gravitating towards that personality when guys who want to control you, guys who want to have their voice heard but not yours, guys who are narcissistic in nature will not feel happy about you sharing your voice with them. So what does your voice mean? Well, there's things that you love and there's things that you hate. There's uh, values that you find meaningful in life. There's activities that you find exciting. Being willing to share the truth of who you are with a man and having him evaluate you with a full picture is part of the thing that's going to allow you to connect with someone who wants someone who is self-expressed versus someone who's repressed and just taking commands from him, which is a dysfunctional, narcissistic type of guy. Number three asking powerful questions early on. Why does this both attract the right man and repel the wrong man? Well, because if you're asking questions, imagine that a guy is conscious enough to know that he's not just gonna start dating randomly, but he knows what he's looking for out of a partner, and he knows why he's dating, there's an intention behind what he's doing, and he has a goal in mind as far as what's the end game if everything goes right. And let's imagine there's another guy who wants to just have a friend with benefits or wants to connect with women to have sex and that's all he wants. Well, that guy will not have thought out all the things that the guy number one will have thought out. So when you ask powerful questions early on, when you connect with a man and figure out together what is it he's looking for in a relationship, what his thoughts on marriage are, uh, what his thoughts on life and the future are, not for you, just for himself, a guy who is clear on what he wants and who wants similar things from you will find that an appealing characteristic, provided that you ask the questions without neediness, you ask the questions willing to receive whatever he's offering you and then make your decisions from then if, as to whether you want to continue connecting with him or not. Uh, as long as you act this from a non-needy place, 
the guy will feel more attracted to someone who's clear about what she wants and not wasting her time or his time. A guy who doesn't know what he wants or a guy who knows that what he wants is something different from you will find it offensive, will tell you that you're really pushy, will try to guilt you into stop asking these difficult questions, and there's no need for that. So when you ask powerful questions with kindness and respect and the man recognizes the beauty in that and the lack of time wasting in that, he's going to be more attracted to you. When a guy is of the kind of time wasting or unsure about what he wants, he's going to find those questions aggressive and offensive. And that same question can both attract and repel a guy. Number four, holding a boundary of no sexual intimacy until you and him choose to become exclusive. Why is this something that will both attract and repel guys? Well, a guy, imagine this. Imagine that you're a guy who wants to create a long-term intimate partnership with someone that leads to marriage and ideally spending the rest of his life with someone. Well, if that's the end goal for him, waiting a few months before having sex with someone, as he's progressing the relationship, the friendship, and in, in some level chemistry is growing, is something doable. For someone who doesn't have that end goal, it's going to be a complete showstopper for him or at least something that dissuades him from pursuing you. So think about it. Next time you hold the boundary of not having sex with someone, if the guy is conscious enough to understand that that can provide for deeper level of intimacy and for more safety for you and for more meaning for him when he ends up having sex with you, that's something that allows him to progress. If he's someone who wants the easy route or he only wants to have sex with women without investing emotionally, then he's going to be dissuaded by that and move on to his next target. <laughs> Number five, sharing what doesn't feel right as soon as possible. Why is this important? Well, because someone who is of the healthy kind, a man who really wants to create a relationship that stands the test of time, is going to both be willing to share what he's interested and not interested in and be willing to receive it. Right? So if the guy says something that is in his eyes a joke, in your eyes offensive, because you feel like he's maybe being passive aggressive with a joke or something, let's say you share with him, hey, you know what? That didn't feel right and here's why. If he is of the let's move forward kind, uh, commitment minded, conscious, he's going to take that in, internalize it, perhaps apologize and do things differently in a way that's not offensive to you going forward. Now, if that guy doesn't have that capacity or isn't looking for something serious, he's going to, again, feel that you're being too uptight, that you uh, don't know how to have fun. He's going to turn it back on you and make you or attempt to make you feel wrong for expressing a need. Number six, this leads me to number six. Number six is having the, again, courage to share your beliefs and values and needs. Why? Because the more you share your beliefs and values and needs as you progress, the connection with someone, the more that person gets the full picture to make his decision about whether he wants to invest more time and energy in you or if it feels like it's a non-compatible situation for him. But again, when you share your beliefs and your values and your needs, guys who don't have that capacity to create a relationship, who are not commitment-minded, they're going to not pay attention, they're going to laugh about them, uh, laugh, make a joke about them, they're going to disregard them, they're going, you share a need and the guy will, uh, it will go through one ear and out the other one. So again, by being more expressive, by sharing more of what you need and value, you get a chance to evaluate the real-time response in someone and his ability to grasp that information and do something powerful and positive with it or turn it back on you and shame you for having ideas and beliefs that perhaps are different from his. Number seven, and I know that what I've been sharing around this has something to do with this, but I'll be as direct as possible here, saying no. Saying no is one of those things that will both repel guys who are of the short-minded, what I want right now, sexual pleasure type only, versus long-term, commitment-minded, investment in time and future type of guys. Having the capacity to say no when something doesn't feel right will both allow for a guy to step up and be kinder, more respectful to you, or for a guy to step down and say, it's my way or the highway. Hope these ideas make sense and allow you to get a better grasp as to whether you're wasting your time with a guy, and if you are, how to turn this around. And I'd like to offer you something. If you find this is meaningful and valuable, I created a class for you that's free that will help you to step into the relationship you want with more ease and less pain <laughs> than your current trajectory. 
If you want to participate in it, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video, click on that link, enter your name and email, and you'll start immediately watching this free masterclass. Now, if you like this video, please click like or thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so you can be, and if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you find this is helpful, let me know in a comment what you thought about this, how you can implement this in some way, or share it with a friend. Last but not least, if you're saying to yourself, this makes sense, I understand this intellectually, but I still have such a hard time putting it into action, you're not the first woman who says that. And if you want my hand holding and help and accountability so you can get to the relationship you want in a fraction of the time, you can apply to work with me on the second link in the description. Again, uh, answer a few questions and if we're the right fit, we'll have a conversation and let you know how I might be able to support you into entering the relationship you want with a lot less stress and with a lot more speed. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.